Welcome to Manufacturing Tech Australia with Shane Williams and Paul Mason. I'm here with Ash Jones from Droneland Australia. Ash, welcome to Manufacturing Tech Australia. Thank you. It's good to be here. So, so you've got a pretty interesting setup here, and I'm going to talk to you about this big boy in a second. Yeah, go for it. But one. Um, I'll save the best to last. Everyone loves the big ones. 100%. Always big boys. <laughs> so maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you guys do. So at Droneland, we are what we like to call an end-to-end -end sales people. So we don't just prefer sell the stuff. We like to give you the whole process of going from start to finish. So that's everything from licensing and getting you into the drone to getting you all the way up, supporting you through the drone, and we actually do contracting work as well. So we, we kind of think of like a one-end shop of giving you everything you need to know. So mm -hmm. going from starting on your first beginner drone, if you want to learn how to fly, stuff like that, all the way to your mapping, your thermal drones, and then obviously to the big boy, which you do sprays and stuff like that. 100%. So you've got the DJI kit over here. Yep. You would talk us a little bit through what each of these is probably a best use case in an ag tech scenario? Yeah. So, I mean, home little one, we get a lot of guys at the moment with the Mini running around just doing their farms, checking their property, stuff like that. Yep. So the Mini allows you to fly on your own property because it's under the weight limits. Yep. You're actually allowed to fly it on your property without having a license. So a lot of guys are getting this just to check their dams, check their livestock, just doing a little quick flying around. Also, it's a good beginner drone to learn to fly on. Yep. So if you can fly this, you can fly the big one. A lot yep. of people get daunted by the big one and go, so big, everything else. But when you fly the little one, it's like any drone. Once you learn to fly, you can fly anything. Yep. Running along next, we have our thermal drone. So thermal drone's more for, uh, in the ag type, we've got guys using uh, um, livestock checking. Mm -hmm. So a lot of guys have found at the moment they're using it for checking their cattle at night, calving season, they don't necessarily want to get a ATV or a motorbike out and scare mum in the calf and yeah. put stress. So we find they're using those to put in the air and use the thermal vision to find them, especially when they're not, they can do it from the safety of their house, so they're also not putting stress to the uh, cattle and stuff like yeah. that. And then we get to our multi-spec. So multi-spec's pretty much our workhorse drone at the moment. So we utilise the multi-spec drone with the big drone. So we'll tend to go through. Now the multi-spec can give you a range of data on what you get from your crop health, all the way down to um, your, your water levels, irrigation, stuff like that. So there's a multi-range you can do with it. So generally what you'll do is you map your property with the multi-spec first, build your subscription maps, build your maps of what you need, input that in the big boy and then the big boy goes off and does its work which is what it needs to do. Right and when you say input it into the big boy is this like a so, autonomous? Yes so it can be autonomous can be manually flown mm -hmm. generally what you find is for tricky spot spray missions somewhere we may do manual flying and we'll manual fly that in but apart from that you'll build your map with the multi-spec put it in the big one and the big one's pretty much autonomous in the way you set up your prescription maps and how it runs on cool. the zones and what you Let's do. Let's have a look at it. So this is the Agris T40 so it has basically a 40 litre spray tank, yep. two spray nozzles at the back which runs, or you can switch this out for a spreading tank which holds uh, up to 70 kilo. Right. And so, okay, so it's dual purpose. Dual purpose, so you can Spraying run and spreading. spray and spreading. Yep. Um, most people at the moment are running sprays just because it's the easiest way to run it. Um, we've found at the moment in the industry it, it's really starting to take off in terms of um, using it for broad spraying, stuff like that. A lot of guys have tractors and stuff like that. Yeah. But what we've found is there is a place in the farming industry where heavy rains, especially with what we've had of late, we've got a lot of heavy rains, a lot of stuff. You don't want to put your heavy machinery on grounds and yeah. tear it all up. So what we've found is the drone's actually starting to become in those as, as an extra tool. It's not meant to be a replacement, but it gives them that extra tool to get out there and start the season early or whatever they need to do rather than wait two, three weeks or whatever for the, for the area to dry up. Yeah. So they're actually fine. It's getting out and it's an extra tool to help them do that. Yeah, right. And what's the sort of flight time you get on this sucker? So on the flight time on what we call Goldilocks Day, so good day, no rain, no yeah. weather, everything else, you get about 15 minutes of flight time out of it. Yeah. And then basically, depending on how you run your flow, so whether you run real straight flow or a lot, comes back pretty much empty if, you, if you're running flat out. You'll run it, drain it down, come back, switch your battery, refill, send it back off in its way. Right, and typically you'll have, what, half a dozen batteries or something? No, you can run, we, we typically recommend running with four, but you can run with three. So the charger that it comes with basically charges the battery within eight to 12 minutes. Okay. So you actually get a charge out of when you're running and when you're going back. So once again, it, it all depends on how your ground team is. So we say the ground time is when it gets down on the ground, refill, put a battery in and send it back on its way. Yeah. If you can get that really down and really fast, Get about 20 hectare an hour out of it. Yeah, right. So then you'd probably be driving as close as you can to the paddock you want to hit and then going from there? So, yes and no. It depends on how much you want to cover. So we know at three metres high, we can get 11 metre coverage yeah. out of the back of it. So if you're running hard and fast and all you're doing is, uh, you know, just trying to bomb a paddock and all you're trying to do is kill it, yeah. you'll obviously run it about three metres, run it as flat out and hard as you can. Yeah. It'll just go and run all day and back and forth. So right. then we can set up for a spot spray mission. So technically, if you only want to hit things in your paddock that you don't want to hit, we can set up a prescription, uh, prescription map, it's hard to get that out, yeah. and what we do is it'll actually run along and won't 
it won't actually spray until you get over the spot that you're telling it to spray. And that's where the multi-spec comes in, where you're getting the vision behind it. You get what you need to do, you can build that map, and then you run it along. So it can actually do spot spraying as well. It doesn't need that ability where you're manually controlling it. Yep. The only time I've seen manual control with it is, I mean, we've got some places where we've gone down, it's a really steep hill, and they'll have a few there. Sometimes to get it in close, you might need to manually control it to get it in place to do the spot spray. But apart from that, most of it's automated. Right. So pretty much you've got two types of drains. You've got search and destroy. Pretty much. <laughs> Easiest way to do it. <laughs> and then we have the big, the other one which we don't have on display at the moment is the um, Matrice 350. Yep. So we're now starting to get into LiDAR work. So right. with LiDAR work, it's a point return. Mm -hmm. So we're actually being able to create maps and stuff like that by going through the penetrates the canopy. So we're now finding a lot of survey guys, stuff like that. Uh, are getting returns where instead of the old vision of getting on top and going it's a tree, we can't see it, we're actually getting penetration through the tree so we can build a map from the ground up. Yeah. So we're actually being able to use, um, so places that they're using it for power line inspections, able to build a surface map so you can actually see the run and fall of ground and stuff like that, especially where you wouldn't necessarily see it through trees. So prime example, rivers is a really good one because you can't see, obviously most rivers have all trees running down it. Yep. You can do a shot and it'll give you exactly the fall, land, how deep, stuff like that because you get into returns. That's cool. Mate, Ash, thanks for being on the show. It's been a pleasure. No worries. Have a good day. Enjoy Future Ag. Cheers. Thanks for tuning in to Manufacturing Tech Australia with Shane and Paul.